Harris's Nursery has thousands of flats of annuals and perennials, greenhouses full of hanging baskets, flowering trees, and shrubs. At Harris's Nursery, you'll find great prices on mulch, garden stone, specialty plants, and topiaries. Voted the number one garden center, 20 minutes from Martinsville, Eden, and Danville. At Dyer's, service is what counts. We provide plumbing contracting services for both small and large projects. Our motto, service is what counts, doesn't just apply to service work. It applies to all the work we do. Sometimes you've just got to have something done right now. Being a service-oriented contractor, we have the facilities in place to get manpower to the job site quickly. We have all the tools and equipment we need to perform almost any job. What does this mean to you? It means that we don't delay projects because we're waiting on someone else's equipment. Dyer's Plumbing, Eden, North Carolina. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them, some y'all. Get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please. Don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. The chase is sneaking up on us. That's Daytona, one of the eight races before it all starts again at Loudoun, New Hampshire. Our guest today is David Rudeman, currently just 12 points out of that magic top 12. David, tell me, how much are you thinking about that every week as you go to these racetracks? Uh, well, you know, we definitely think about the chase every week when you're going out there. You know you need to uh, score as many points as you possibly can, get yourself you know, solidly up inside there. So when the cutoff comes around, you know, you're you're not going into the last race trying to struggle to fight your way in. And uh, But, uh, you know, we're, we're close. We've been in the chase. We've been out and back in again and back out again. So uh, uh, hopefully we can uh, get in there and stay in there where we belong. And it, it, it's a tough, man. The points are so tight, you know, from, you know, eighth on back that all it takes is one bad race to really knock you out of contention for doing something really good. So we're working really hard to be more consistent and, and be a little smarter in what we do. And, and uh, I, we definitely have the team to do that. We just got to go out there and, and apply what we know we can do, and I, I think we'll be in good shape. Do you race differently looking at the big picture? I, I don't think you can race any differently. Uh, I, I think you know you take, go out there, you take the Aaron's Dream Machine, and you do the most you can with uh, with what it'll give you for that particular day. Um, you don't put yourself in bad situations. You got to finish the races, DNFs, and all those things are just completely uh, unacceptable uh, when, when you're trying to do those kinds of things. So uh, you know you don't really race any any different. You just go out there and. I think at that point, you know, you, you, you be as aggressive as you possibly can. And I think then when you get in the chase, then, then you have to be aggressive. You have to make things happen at that point because, you know, you really got nothing to lose. You know, you're, you're, you, you got to go because you got a very few amount of races to, to get the job done in. Uh, we're leading up to it, man. You got to be consistent every week. And you have to be consistent when you're in the chase, too. But, you know, again, you just don't. I think in the, when you're in the chase, you become more aggressive. Uh, when you're outside of it, you just have to really, really be careful and, and make sure you don't get that DNF or put yourself in a bad situation. David, always a pleasure to have you with us on Raceline. Congratulations on your year so far, and good luck in your quest to make it in the chase. Thanks, Seth. Appreciate it. Let's uh, talk about picks. Now, last week, uh, going into the Loud New Hampshire race, here's how we stacked it up. Tiffany, you had Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Postman had Denny Hamlin. I had Greg Biffle. Once again, None of us got it right. Rain again. Uh, who, who could tell that? But what about this week? Going into Daytona, Postman, what do you think? I'm going way out on a limb this week. I'm going with Michael Waltrip. We talked about a little bit earlier, Daryl Waltrip going to be in, in his shop. Michael Waltrip is great on plate races. His team has shown to be very, very good. And wouldn't it be really cool? And I'm one of those feel-good kind of story guys. Wouldn't it be awesome if when they make their announcement, they're talking about a winning car? that Martin Truex or whoever's going in that car. I'm going with Michael Waltrip out on a limb to win Saturday night down in Daytona. Well, I'm going with a guy this week who pretty much had the race at Loudoun last week snatched from him. I'm not going to say stolen because it wasn't stolen, but Ryan Newman had the thing under control until the rain started again and he pitted and Joey Logano ended up out front. 
Not only that, Ryan Newman is last year's Daytona 500 winner. And with the way Stuart Haas has been running all year, it's about time for that second car to get into victory lane. I think it'll be at Daytona this weekend. Well, guys, you know, sometimes you just have a feeling about a race. I have a feeling this week that Carl Edwards is going to be the winner. His teammate, Matt Kenseth, won the 500 earlier this year at Daytona. Carl was runner-up in this race last year, and he's still looking for his first win of the 2009 season. I think it'll happen Saturday night. All right, our picks for this week, Michael Walter, Brian Newman, or Carl Edwards. Don't forget, make your picks as well. Go to our website at racelineonline.com. Next week, we will finally catch up with Jamie McMurray, who we've been meaning to talk to for some time. He was a winner of the Summer Daytona race several years ago. We'll talk about going to Chicago with Jamie McMurray. Have a great week and join us next time on Raceline. Raceline is brought to you by Mechanics Wear, the number one glove in NASCAR. By Ford, get the latest Ford racing news at FordRacing.com. Also by MRN Radio, the voice of NASCAR. And by Fast Track, the weekly NASCAR news leader. Find out more about our sponsors and contact us at the Raceline website at RacelineOnline.com. Times are hard, and pastors are getting angry in Danville. Whether you believe the way I believe or not, I don't care. Videotape me. I run the devil out of our church, so get out. Don't come on this property again. Understand me. All right. Well, as I All leave, right. as I leave, I hope you read 2 Timothy 2.24. I hope you read too, son. You worry about your own problems. You get out of my business. There is no better business bureau in religion. The Church of Christ, then, is your best bet. We're at the tent, 7 p.m. each night, June 22nd through July the 3rd, across from the mall in Danville on Mount Cross, right next to... I couldn't stay in China at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them, some y'all. Get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please, don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance, and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. All right, everyone, welcome back to A Word from the Lord. What does the Bible say? Combination, tag team, you might say, during the tent meeting. We are uh, going every night just about this week and last week to bring you uh, a, a portion of God's Word, studying God's Word with you, as well as out of the tent, 335 Mount Cross Road, next to Legacy Town & Country, CarQuest Auto Parts uh, uh, parking lot. Tonight is the last night, but it's not the end. A lot of work and effort has been going, going into getting the gospel out to Danville. People are talking about it. We go everywhere we go. We see people with their flyers that we've been passing out. We see them on houses. We see individuals talking about or meet people who have been watching the television programs. We thank, that. We thank you for that. We want you to know that this is not the end. This is just the beginning. A lot of Bible studies have been set up. Individuals coming out. They want to examine the truth. When I left the tent... Uh, this evening to come down here to the station. I noticed there were four or five 
uh, individuals that I had never seen before in the tent, knew from the community coming out to visit, examined the truth. One uh, gentleman and his wife said, we wanted to come out the last night. We've been uh, trying to get down here. We wanted to come out the last night at least to meet y'all, and, and we're going to come and visit with y'all. That is what it's all about, getting uh, the truth out to the community, getting you to understand that the Church of Christ that meets in your area, whether you're in Danville, Reedsville, Martinsville, Eden, uh, anywhere in North Carolina, if they are following the Bible, if they are following the Word of God, the Church of Christ, is where you can go to get a word from the Lord, no doubt about it. We are interested in the truth. So we want you to know that uh, the end of the tent meeting is really just the beginning. It's just the next phase is going to start. Uh, Brother Mark McMinnis came up to me today and said uh, uh, a man from the Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, invited them to come have a Bible study with them. Usually we ask people if you would like to have a Bible study and they kind of hem haw around and sometimes they say, yeah, I'd like to, and then they don't show up or they don't, they don't uh, uh, come around or they change their mind. But this gentleman said, we want you to come to our Bible study. And so that's the kind of impact we're having on the community. That's what we want, to, want you to realize. We are interested in you studying God's Word. So if you're in Danville, if you're in Martinsville, if you're in Eden, you can always assemble with the Church of Christ that's meeting in your area. 120 American Boulevard, American Legion Boulevard in Danville is where the brethren are meeting there that uh, hosted this tent meeting, that put it on, brought it to you, and that is where you can meet if you're in Danville. If you're in Eden, we're at 250 the Boulevard. Uh, and if you are in uh, uh, Dan uh, Martinsville, it's 820, 823 uh, Starling Avenue. So nonetheless, we hope that you will uh, take advantage of that. Just to give you some contact numbers, I don't have the, uh, the uh, addresses and so forth up here, but here's how you can reach all the individuals that can help you understand God's will uh, more perfectly. You can call me at 276-340-2653, Johnny Robertson, 276-806-2150, Mark McMinnis is 434-549-1714, uh, or Micah. Robertson is 434-429-5221. Uh, so this is the information that you can uh, uh, take down and use for uh, 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 reaching someone who will be glad to study God's Word with you. So we hope that you will do that. If you didn't make it out to the tent, I'm telling you, friends, neighbors, you missed a, a wonderful, wonderful occasion to hear some great gospel preaching and actually meet some of your good friends from the Church of Christ. The DVDs are still available for, for all the lessons under the tent, uh, DVDs of all the, te uh, the television programs that have been on nearly every night during uh, this tent meeting effort. I think we're on every night except, uh, well, we're on every night except um, the, the tomorrow, I guess it will be. So uh, 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 about, that's about 12 days straight of uh, uh, of uh, television programs so you can have those if you just uh, call one of these individuals call one of us and and we'll make sure that you get a a copy of it <clears throat> as soon as, as possible so that's what we want to know friends i want just to give you a recap of what's happened on the tent you know we we uh, showed you or we demonstrated that a lady came up the first night that we were there the fir or the first day the tent went up, the prophetess came to the tent. I'm not going to, don't want you to have to uh, watch all of this, but I do want you to re recall it. Well, uh, the lady came up to the tent. She uh, uh, claimed to be a prophetess. She was going to uh, uh, come out to see what it was all about. She came to the tent. She said she's going to come back. She was really kind of talking uh, down to everybody or talking down to me especially and uh, said she's going to come back, said I was going to apologize to her in front of everybody there, and I told her that I would be glad to do that if she simply demonstrated that she was an apostle or that she was a prophet. Didn't come back, hadn't seen hide nor hair of her, and that is because she is a false prophet. She is a false apostle. She's a liar, and that is why we are doing what we're doing, friends. We're trying to get you to see the hypocrisy of these individuals who simply tout to be men or women of God and can't do what God says his men and women could do. God never allowed his prophets to be, uh, to be harmed or evil spoken of. You did not disrespect them. And thus it is the case that if I spoke evil against this woman or spake against her, surely 
surely God would have demonstrated that she was, in fact, a spokesman for him. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. She didn't come back to the tent like she said she was, and so uh, which that wasn't really a surprise to us. But nonetheless, it just helped demonstrate that the, God's word is true, and uh, the false prophets like like this lady and others are liars. We did have an Anabaptist preacher come to the tent, sat there, sat through the lesson. After it was over, we talk, after it was over with, we talked to him for. A, a great number of, of, of time. I finally went home. I had my wife and family in the van with me and one of the brethren riding with me. Uh, so we went out that way. He stayed till 4 a.m. discussing the Bible. That is what went on at the tent. Those are some things that, that, uh, that you would have missed. Uh, to date, in uh, starting, uh, how many days would it have been? It had been 12 days, I guess, no, um, uh, 12 or 13 days, starting on Saturday before the tent. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday, not Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. How many is that? 13? 13 days. 16,800 flyers. That's not counting so the flyers that were distributed prior to the tent going up. So uh, this is very a, a very conservative number. 16,000 flyers uh, distributed throughout Throughout uh, Danville, if you could see the map, friends, you would be amazed at the ground we covered. I'm impressed. I didn't think it would ever be done. I never imagined it would be this great, but that's just how determined we are to get the gospel out. So just a small recap of what's going on under the tent. And friends, that's why we're saying, that's why we're saying we love you so much. We love you and we want to give you the Bible, and God, which is God's truth, so that you can know what the will of God is. If you weren't watching the program last night, we were having a very interesting discussion about some racial issues. A lady called in. I want you to listen to what this lady says. This is the kind of information that we're trying to get to you because of misinformation like this lady had. Now, she was, you know, she was stumbling all over herself trying to prove her point. I'm not trying to belittle her, but I'm saying there's a lot of individuals that would believe and feel the same way she did, but yet when it comes down to showing what the Bible says... The Bible clearly refutes everything the woman was saying. But I want you to listen. Just, it's just one call. Listen to what she says just so you can see what, what you missed if you didn't watch the program last night and what you're missing if you don't study the Bible with your uh, neighbors from the Church of Christ because we are interested in trying to dispel the myths that actually keep us separate, that actually bring up the animosities and the ill feelings toward neighbors, and so we're trying to get you to see this is what's going to take. It's going to take individuals opening up the book and just going back to the Bible to find out what thus saith the Lord, and that will, will remedy a lot of this hatred and animosity that's going on. But this is the kind of misinformation that we're trying to dispel. So listen to this woman caller from last night. The way I understand God created all uh, the different races. Let me try it again. I didn't have my volume turned up. TV, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I'm calling in regards to uh, the in the question about the interracial marriages that was on there a little bit uh, yes, earlier. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, ma'am. The way I understand God created. Uh, the different races, uh, he created them both male and female. And uh, to me, and it kind of like common sense that God made the uh, white man and then he made the white female for this white man and so on throughout the races. And I well, mean, shouldn't we stay with our own race like the animals stay with their own animals. You don't see dogs breeding with cats. No, but you're right. You know what? But you know what you do see? I, I've seen I've seen white cows breed with black cows. Well, now that may be so, but we're not talking about. Um, I mean, God made male and female. We're talking about man here. We talk. I know about we're animals, talking about man. Right. We're not talking about the animals. But right? Well, but man, but you're comparing dogs breeding with cats. Those are two different species. 
Are okay, you saying well, Are you saying that man, that a like black person all is the a different? races of man on the earth. I mean, he made male and female uh, of of all the races, and so therefore, no, no, to no, me, no, no. Wait a minute. But what? Look at this. Common right. sense that he made a help meet for each man of each race, and I just don't believe that um, we should be into all this interracial stuff. You know, I well, don't even think you all should even be ex. ex uh, you know, talking about it really or trying to encourage anybody. Why? Well, ma'am, here's what we're saying, though. You, are you saying that, I mean, you actually used the analogy of, of a dog and a cat, not... We're not, not talking about dogs and but cats. You, we're talking about you men are, and women. Ma'am, you of, brought up dogs and cats. Races. You we're brought up dogs and cats. About, uh, men and women. I know. We're talking about men and women, ma'am. Are you saying... Right, and we're are talking you about saying, different races. Are you saying... And one, I, every are you man saying that God one made, race? he made a help meet. Uh, he made a woman for... All right. Look at this. Race. He made a help meet. Did he make a help... What? What? Well, by the way, what race was Adam and Eve? Well, um, you know, again, I'm saying that you're being um, somewhat... Um, well... Just put it like this. He didn't make no Adam and Steve, that's for sure. And he made both of them the same color, I would assume. Are, are you sure? Well, I How mean, you know? I'm not. No, I'm not 100% sure. Are you sure he didn't? I'm, I'm, sure he, I'm sure that he made Adam and Eve, and from them came all the races. Everybody came from Eve. Oh, I know that. Yes, then, I know then, that. Well, then if, they, if they all came from Eve, why can't they all intermarry just because it may be a different a different color well you know going back again like what we was talking about i just think that you know like if, if there's say like a chinese man uh, i think he needs to marry a chinese woman i think Why? that just common sense no, no that's not common sense people that god made male and female right here of you know us humans and i would think by making male and female of you know, each uh, race that he would intend for the race to stay pure. And Man, not what, mix. But, but the race wasn't pure to start with. The, what, what race was Adam and Eve? You know, whatever race Adam and Eve is, uh, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about, um, you know, I mean, are you trying to say Adam and Eve was made of different races? If you are, I have never seen that in the Bible, and I've never well, look at this right here. Well, read this in the Bible. Can you can you see this? Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of the white people. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Amen. Okay. Now, would that be would that include white people? You tell me who it excludes. Tell me who is not who is not a child of Eve of Adam and Eve. White we're people, all, black uh, people, brown people. Eve, but she just like we are of God, but still and yet, it doesn't say it's okay to marry into but another race. But ma'am, here's what we're saying though. Look, at, when God made Adam and Eve, he put within them all of the genes DNA. necessary to create man. That's why Mark's tall, I'm a little short. That's why I have red hair. What hair I have is red. And Mark's may be brown or blonde. That's why some people are blonde-haired, blue-eyed, and some people are dark-haired and brown-eyed. But they're all, they're all human beings. They all came from the so same you mother. insult my intelligence when I'm you not, say that. Of course we're all human beings. And, well, ma'am, and what I'm trying to you, say to you is, I'm why not, would God make us male and female of the same race? Uh, you know, if he wanted us to mix, why didn't he just... You know, uh, I mean, do you think I just it, don't do you, believe that God Do you God think it might have been because he knew mix. some people were going to have problems that, Thanks. you know, with getting over a different skin color, and he wanted you to understand that what God makes is something special? It doesn't matter what they look like on the outside? God looks on the inside. I don't think God, I just don't think God intended for, uh, you know, let's say, um, I don't think God intended for um, you think God is a respectful person. Chinese or, or so on like that because He did make them male and female, and you know that's just the way I believe. And and I really don't think it's a good thing for you guys to say that uh, what the Bible there's says. no problems with interracial marriages. Well, let me ask you this: causes little children to 
go through this world and being interracial, it's got to be a very, very I don't hard so. thing and heartbreaking thing for a I child to so. have to live with. On, only for world, people, you know, being it's, interracial. It's only a problem, ma'am. It'll only be a problem for them when they come across individuals who think that whites should marry whites and blacks should marry blacks and brown should marry browns and yellow should marry, marry, yeah, marry, marry yellow. That's who's going to give them trouble. Can I, well, ask, you, can you, I know, ask you a question um, about Moses? Like right here. How, how do you feel me, about why Moses? God would make a male and female uh, of the same race if he didn't intend for us to keep our race pure? Ma'am, and it doesn't a, have anything to do with, a, let's just it say have example, do with making a male and female of the same race. and a white woman got together and produced a child, well, aren't they creating an entirely different race? No. Why? They're all part of the human race. Excuse me? They're all part of the human race. Yeah, but, I mean, I, you know, I'm Caucasian, you're Caucasian. I mean, we're talking about color here, you know. Well, and when, I, that's exactly Let's right. say if I married a Chinaman or something, um, my child, the race would not be pure. Are you, are, well, what's so, what's so special about the white race? There's nothing special about the I bet, ma'am, I, 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 I would suggest if you did a little, little genealogy research, you might be surprised what kind of blood in your what, race, what kind of blood runs through your veins. All of them are precious in the sight of the Lord, and God loves his, his all of His people, regardless of what they're raised. Ma'am, you know what you're saying? I you just don't believe listen. it's proper for us to, you know, to mix. Ma'am, listen. Here's what you're saying. God loves us all, but yes, yet he God, does. no, no, stop. Now you've had your chance. You're saying God loves us all. But yet he wants us to be pure because he does because he doesn't love us if we're mixed. No, I didn't say anything about God didn't love us if we're mixed. But that's what you're. That's the conclusion. No, 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 sir. I didn't say so that. If, you're saying well, that. Well, let me ask you this: so if a if a you're, if two like people it's okay for two, if two people if two people of a different race marry, is it a sin? Will you answer that? If two people of a different race marry, is it a sin? All of his children. If two people of a, of a different race marry, is it a sin? No, I don't think it's a sin. But I so just, then, why is it? Why are you making a problem about it? I just don't think God intended it. You know it what? That you know what, ma'am? I think I think races. you believe that you are superior than other races. No, you're trying to tell me what I believe. Sir. No, I'm just saying that's believe. the conclusion I'm going to come to. If you're going to say that white should marry white and black I, should marry black, the white race is supremacy. <clears throat> like that. I think all races are precious in the eyes of the Lord, but I think it's you that encourages these people to go out here and mix. It's one Who's reason that we have so many problems in the world today. No. Because you know what, man? If we were all mixed, if we mix. were all mixed, we wouldn't have this problem because everybody would look the same color. The problem comes when everybody goes, well, we need to have whites over here and browns over here and yellows over here. You know what? I don't even want to talk this with you anymore because okay. you need to read the Bible. Well, you need to all right, let me read. Will you read this verse before you go? I don't want you to How do you feel about Moses? Me, I've got my Bible here How do you and feel I about know Moses? what my Bible says, you know, well, well, and I don't, well, here's, I don't go here's around the Bible, here right and here. Uh, encourage people to marry different races and stuff because I've got common sense enough to know that when God made me whatever color I am, he made a black uh, or white or regardless. You know what, ma'am? No, but not color. everybody is black he made a man or white. For me. Not everybody is black or white. Some, not everybody is black or white. Don't Some people in the black that? community. You are so have, insulting to my ma intelligence. Ma'am, you're insulting the intelligence of all the viewers. Not everybody in the black community is jet black, and not everybody in the white community is pure white. So, so tell me what color? You know what color should I? What color person should I marry? See, because not everybody is pure white. Not everybody is pure black. There's going to be some browns in here now. Do we need to go and get a, <clears throat> go down to Sherwin Williams and get a color test, you know, to see exactly what color skin you are? Because you know what, ma'am, I want to show you this. Now you tell me what color person I should marry. Look at this. Now there, that, that's that's one color. But look at their hair. Look at the difference. You know, Lily White. Why? Why? Been out in the sun. Now do I need to go get another wife because now my skin's color different? Come on, ma'am. We're talking about we're talking about the difference. In, in color of skin. And we're talking about looking at people on the inside. You want to talk about reading your Bible? The Bible says God looks on the inner man, not the outer, not the outer man. 
Now, what would you say about Moses? Look at this. Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Now, you know what, ma'am? I think if you were in Miriam's place, in Aaron's place, you would have something to say about Moses marrying this black woman. But you know what God said? God said about Moses, God said, uh, Moses was me. Here's what the Lord said. The Lord spake suddenly to Moses and Aaron and said unto Miriam, Come ye, come out ye three into the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down the pillar of the cloud and stood in the tabernacle, door of the tabernacle and called Miriam, Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If, I, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. He says, he's not like all these other prophets that I appear in a vision. He said, Moses is faithful in all my house, even though he's married a black woman. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Because he married a black woman? Now, ma'am, if you want to read your Bible, you know, you want to talk about reading your Bible? My Bible seems to stress that God actually defended a man who married someone who was of a different race. So don't give me all this, well, we need to keep the race pure. Ma'am, there's, there's not a pure white person in the world. There's not a pure black person in the world. There's not a pure brown person in the world. What, what is pure? We all came from the same mother. Now, you know, don't tell me I'm, I'm insulting your intelligence. I'm trying to help you with some intelligence. All right, now, now, folks, this is the kind of, I say silliness, the kind of misinformation that causes more harm than it does good. When individuals can't see, can't get past the outward skin color of someone else, that can only cause problems. That can only cause, cause uh, uh, friction, if you will. And in the Church of Christ, we're trying to help everybody move past that. Now, I know some of you who are watching last night were probably uh, pretty appalled uh, at, w at what was going on, but we're trying to help you realize <clears throat> that this is the way people feel. This is the way people have been taught. As one of the brethren just wrote me a little note, and he said, you know, the lady was talking about it's just common sense. No, it's common belief. It's what everybody profess is truth, but it's really not. It's a myth. We're trying to bust that myth. We're trying to help you see that, you know, you don't need to focus on the color of skin. You need to focus on what God says. It's not about the skin color. It's all about the counsel. In Acts 20 and verse 27, the Bible says that Paul told the, uh, the Jews, he said, Now I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. That's what we're trying to do. Give you all the information you need in order to, in order to uh, uh, make a wise judgment. You're on the air? That lady was talking uh, with good sense. Uh, not, not, not that uh, you have to be uh, against color, but what she said made good sense. Because if if uh, the race is mixed, you won't exist like you are now. What, what difference does that make? We've got some volume problems somewhere. What difference would it make? It won't make yeah. no difference with me, but uh, it's people of your uh, Caucasian people that do make a difference. Well, what about black people, Malvester? And if God would uh, uh, allow Caucasian people to be on the planet, then uh, maybe he intends for them to stay like that. Well, do you... Do they say, you... They say uh, uh, by 2025, it'll be a miracle be brown. So well, so if it, if it be brown, then the Caucasian people won't exist. Well, if it's brown, that means it must be because some black people became whiter and and white people became darker. Well, you Would know that be what? The case? Uh, 
from slavery. Uh, y'all lighting us up, uh, messing with our woman. So that, that, that's, y'all didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I don't own slaves, my Western. I ain't say you. I said your people. Your people. Who are uh, my people? I ain't heard you. I said who are my people? Caucasian people. Do you think? Do you think Caucasian people are the only ones that had slaves? Did uh, you know? Did uh, you know in America that actually there were Native Americans that had slaves and blacks that had slaves? Uh, not like not like uh, the black people in America. We was we was in slavery for four hundred years here yeah. in America. Really? Yes. You know what? Tomorrow we celebrate the birthday of America, if you will. Seventeen seventy six. Let's do the math. Is that four hundred years? Okay. Now, now I'm glad you asked that question because don't you know that uh uh, uh the slave traders brought us here in fifteen fifty five. Okay. And and where did they get the slaves from? Let me let me let me. Where did they get the this. slaves from, Malvester? Huh? Where did they, where did the slaves come from? From Africa. And who sold the slaves? Who sold them? Yeah. <laughs> who bought them? Who sold them? Do even all of them wrong? It's some okay. Africans wrong. Okay. It's a, it, and, and and the people that bought us was wrong too. So uh, and, and the people that, that sold you war. were wrong. You know, there's still slavery going over in Sudan right now. Uh, that, right. You know what? Uh, black people own black slaves now. I don't want to get bad? into that because I know you don't. You you bringing some in that no, you're not, not. Get, making the people I'm wise not. enough to to deal with what you're saying. No, I'm not. You're trying you're trying to make this an, a white black issue, and I'm saying slavery is a, lot a, of is a human from, being uh, issue. Europe and Britain going in there, uh, 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 causing problem because there's a lot of water in the Sudan there. I mean oil, and uh, and and there are too. There's a lot of oil there, and they and they, these uh, superpowers trying to go in there and cause havoc so they can get the uh, oil. And, 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 and destroy the people. Well, you know what, Malvester? People, so the, countries have been going. Countries that. have been going in to take over other other territories for natural resources since since the dawn of time. I, I know. Mean, that's, that's, that's the, the, the European that's the, uh, countries have did that, and, 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 and Africa have built all of the European countries uh, from their wealth. And, and and you know, but if you want to get into but, that, we can talk about that. But, but, but what does that have to? But what does that have to do with? with white people buying black people. My point is slavery is the problem. It has nothing to do with color. Slavery. Now you uh, said uh, now uh, you, it did have something to do with color. No it doesn't. Because, slavery because, is uh, a human we were, slavery know, is an issue about human America beings first now. Started, when America first started, they send people from Europe here to work to work off of their time and it was uh, uh Caucasian people were slaves then. Uh, you call it indigenous slavery. And, and they worked their time off, and they was free. But well, we couldn't do that. We was brought here and made slaves for 400, well, Lester, 400 I, I'm years. Not, do you think I'm justifying slavery? No, no, I'm not saying that. I don't, okay. I don't think you that kind of person. I'm not. I'm, I'm saying slavery, whether a, a black man's in slavery or a white man's in slavery, that's, that's what's wrong. We just discussed the Bible last night, First Timothy 1.10, talks about men stealers. And that was the whole point. But, but see, you're trying to erase our, our uh, ugly uh, history that, that happened to us in America. We, we no, were here. No, no I'm, I'm not trying to erase anything. I'm trying to make the point that uh, when uh, you mistreat someone or when you go against what God says, how you ought to treat someone, then you're going to reap the consequences later on. Uh, now, it doesn't matter if you mistreat a man of a brown color, yellow color, red color, or, or white color, or black color. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. That's, okay. That, that's wrong. That's wrong. Now, now, uh, in the in the Genesis, the 15th chapter of Genesis, uh, God told Abraham, "Know of a sure that seed would be a strange on a land that's not theirs, and they shall afflict them for 400 years." And we are those people that no, are you're not. in this country. No, you're not. We have been Malvester, afflicted no, for Malvester, 400 why years. Are you, why are you quoting the Bible when you don't even believe it's God's word? I believe the, the truth of the Bible. Now, what does that mean? Let's let's get down to the nitty gritty of it. What does that mean? Uh, uh, the you truth believe of the parts of it, right? Huh? You believe parts of it. That's what you believe, right? I, no, I believe the truth of it. Now, what does that mean? Go ahead and define it. it, it that's what I'm saying. I believe the truth of it. Now, when when but when what does that mean? No, you, you no, you define use, the term uh, for everybody. What does that mean? You believe the truth of it. The truth of it is the part that people can understand. That's what I'm thought. The part that you like. See, oh. see, Malvester, you're no different than the Mormons. You pick and choose what you like, and, and then you say, you, well, uh, this I is the truth of it. 
I haven't called you uh, 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 some other. What's wrong with Mormons? Uh, to me, I think they're some good people. They, they got I'm their not, own food. I'm and, not uh, saying anything they, wrong with Mormons. I'm saying in, Mormon uh, doctrine. Uh, I'm saying Mormon doctrine. Why you want to make it about a personal thing? I'm saying Mormon doctrine. I don't know about no Mormon doctrine. I'm you telling you about that, Mormon I, doctrine. I'm them, saying I you're saying the same thing about Mormon people, doctrine. Uh, you're saying the same thing about the Bible that the Mormons say. Huh? I'm saying you're saying the same thing about the Bible that the Mormon doctrine teaches. I don't you pick know and choose. That. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Well, see, that's your opinion, too. No, it's not opinion. It's fact. They'll tell you the Bible is God's word in so much as it's translated correctly. You come on, you say, well, I believe the, I believe the truth of the Bible. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. What is the, uh, uh, whose image is the cross? Who gave you that image? The, who gave you the image of the cross? What do you mean, the image of the cross? Christ died on the cross. The cross is an image, right? But who who did that image represent? Jesus said he was going to die on the cross. He he foretold his his crucifixion. I don't know what you mean by whose image is it. I, I you got that in the scripture where he said he was going to die on the cross. Mm -hmm. You got that scripture where he said he was going to die on the cross. Yeah. But I'm but I'm asking you, whose symbol is that? I don't know. You tell me. You know the symbol of Jesus. You know what they were. Say it again. The symbol of Jesus was a fish. No, that's no that that's not that's not in the Bible. Yes, it is. That's it, not in the uh, Bible. The symbol of Jesus was now, a fish. Now, where's that in the Bible? Or is that in the truth of the Bible? Or did you read it somewhere else? It's in the Bible. No, it's not. Uh, he said he said be fishermen of men. And that's the symbol. Of, that that's the symbol. But that's part of it. But uh, 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 I I know more about. Uh, uh, stuff you don't know uh, oh, yeah. but but yeah. you know some of the stuff won't put in the bible there right. was a couple of books that moses didn't put in you right. know that right yeah now now you sound not the catholics let's, what? Let's, add, let's add to the bible now you sound not the catholics a catholic yeah well let's you add, know let's what add I, to the bible you know any any man that know uh uh jesus know god uh they can teach uh all three religions well Matt, oh well, my mom Lester, you don't even believe that jesus is the son of god so why are you wanting to tout him as an authority well, well, Jesus said, when they asked Jesus how to pray, he said, pray in this wise. He said, he didn't say my father. He said, our father. So Jesus is my brother. And God, the same God Jesus that he is called not your father brother. is my father. Jesus is not your brother. Yes, he is. No, he's not. You, and, he, and you Jesus said he's the son Moses. of God. Jesus said he's the son of God. Now, do you believe he is the son of God? Uh, the only begotten son of God? Do you believe he told us to pray? You're not going to answer that. Do you believe he said? Do you believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God? Uh, he, he, Jesus is my brother. Do you believe that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God? I said he's my brother. I said, do you believe that he is the only begotten Son gonna, of God? I'm not going. Uh, uh, I know you're not, Malvester, because you want all these people. You're trying to you want all these, to no, people you want all these people to think that you are some uh, godly man and that and that uh, that you actually believe the Bible when you really don't. Let's face it, you really don't believe the Bible. That you, I don't believe you believe it. I believe the Bible. I believe it's God's word. You know, you know Moses. Moses was a half original man, just like uh, uh, Barack Obama. Now where's that? Now where's that in the Bible, or is that in some other book that you added to it? Uh, uh, and, Moses and, uh, was a half Ethiopian. original man. So, you know, you know when you uh, talk about the Bible over in the East, you know you you have to know that the people over there was black people. Malvester. Everybody is not black or white. You know, we're talking about individuals. Now, now, now I'm talking like that lady said, you're trying to insult me, uh, my intelligence, when they're saying that. We know that. We know that. But see, you trying to, see, we done got you above your understanding, so now you have to attack. It's more than black now, and Mal white. Lester? Everybody knows it's black. It's been five atoms. It has now, been Mal five atoms. You know what, Mal Vester? That you know, we're not going on this road. You're going to come up and spouse in all this, all this black, Islamic brown, doctrine. Black, red, yellow, and Caucasian. Each one of them is an atom, and each one of them had a mate. Now, where do you get this? Now, give us the authority for it. Black, brown, red, give yellow, and Caucasian. Give us the authority for it. Are the five races. Give us the authority for it. That's the five races. Give so us the authority them, for it, Malvester. Give us the authority. Atom. Give us the authority for it. Now, see, folks, see what happens when you try to justify. When you try to justify keeping a race pure, and that's what Mal Vetter said, the woman's making common sense, she's making sense. So you had to come up, well, you know what, there's, there's five atoms, one for each of the races. No, there's not. You don't believe the Bible. See, he comes on, I believe the Bible, it's the truth of God's Word. Well, the truth of God's Word says that God created man, Adam, 
in his own image, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. So when he comes up with this five atoms, listen, folks, he's not believing the Bible. Now, do you want to tell us where you get the five atoms, Malvester? One chance, do you want to hear us where you get the five atoms? Now, you have to understand. Where do you get the five atoms? Well, let me talk then, you know. Don't get excited. I'm, I'm just trying to get you to the point. Well, I'm, you want I'm, to run I'm around the bush? To the point. Uh, each race had an atom. It was a beginning of each people. Okay, where did you get that? Where I get it from? Yeah, where do you get it from? Uh, uh, it's common sense. Oh, no, it's common belief to you. Give it from the Bible. That's what we want. Now, now, this is, this, is, this is a word from the Lord. What does the Bible say? This is not a word from Malvester in some fictitious work that he brought up. Tell us where you get five atoms from. Everybody came from Adam and Eve. Okay. Everybody came from them. But through genetic engineering, we made the other races. Now, now, who, now who's Adam genetic and engineering? Adam black. Now, is this, is this a word from the Lord or is this a word from, from Star Trek? What is this? This is not science fiction. Well. Where, where do you get all this? <laughs> you, you know what? <laughs> it, it's got to be funny to you because we're, we're talking about the Bible and you're, you're making I'm, up I'm, all this I'm, I'm, five I'm like atoms. If, if white people was the first people, then how did black people get who here? Said, who said white people were the first people? You said that, not me. Okay, then. So we have to know that Adam and Eve was black. No. Uh, uh, no. Well, what color was it then? Why do they have to be a specific? Why do they have to be white, black, red, yellow, orange, green? Why do they have to be a certain color? Well, what color was it then? I don't know what color they were, but they possess all you. the traits, all the genetics that would make up all the races since they all came from Adam and Eve. Well, your scientist said that they went to Africa and my found scientists? a black skull. Why are you putting words in my mouth, my best of all civilization. You know, I find it interesting that you quote sources and attribute them to me, but yet you, know, when it comes to, I'm asking for the source that you're, See, you're I, the source I want. You can't quote it. You're making an issue about black and white. I don't I'm have not a making an issue black about and black and white. You're the one called up and said it makes sense for blacks to stay with blacks and whites to stay with whites. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. The lady said that. I said. And you I said, said she that made she sense. Saying, and you said she made sense. Yes, it makes sense because. Okay. It, Thank you. Well, well uh, it makes sense because if if race mix and mix are, are big, then you know what? Caucasian people won't exist no more. Well, neither will black people. How about that? We will. Yeah, we will. We. Uh, why will you? Black, why? Why? Because, because we, you just lighten us up, we'll still have our, our features. Well, you just darken us up, we'll still have our features. No, no. Oh, so no. are you are you saying that, that, that the black race is superior to yes, every other we, race? not n dominant, dominant. I'm sorry? Like that, dominant. We are dominant. Whatever we touch, we change it. So you're, say, so you're saying you're superior? Uh, you can say that. I said dominant. No. I don't want to use So what that does word. that mean, dominant, then? Because I know what dominant genes mean. Right. We, we, we are dominant. So, so, so you're superior. You can say that if you want. I'm not. You, you, you always trying to lead me into something. Well, something you're the one calling uh, it. You're uh, the uh, one calling it, defending it. I'm saying that we are dominant. You, you believe, you believe, you believe in racial superiority, don't you, Malvester? No. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Come on, admit it. No, you I can don't. admit it. Uh, how could I believe in that when I've been under slavery? I come up, uh, come from slaves, right? How could I feel like that? I ain't never felt I, I like that. I know how you can feel like anybody. that. See? I never, I never felt like that. So are you, are you going to go back and give us the, the, that verse for those five atoms or not? The verse for what? For, for the five atoms. The, fi uh, the Chinese people uh, was a had an atom. The Japanese. And that's and that what book and chapter? The Indians. And that's what book and chapter? The Caucasian. People. And that's what book and chapter? Now, now, and that's now what book Genesis, and chapter? Wait a minute, Genesis. All right, Malvester. You know what? Wait so a minute. This is what? No, I'm not going to wait because I've asked you numerous times. To give us from the Bible, which you say is just the truth. Okay, okay. You know, you'll be the, the third truth chapter of it. Genesis, uh, I think it's the... Uh, okay, so now we're getting a verse from him. It says that... Uh, Genesis 3. Let us make man. That's chapter 2. All right, all right, then. It said, let us make man. Now, God don't make things. God creates. Oh, so we're going we're gonna to parse words here now. Can you pull that up? Can you pull that up? Uh, yeah. Description. Yeah. It's Genesis, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Let us make man in our own image. Okay, pull it up. Here it is. All right. Let us make man in our image and likeness. All right, now go to the next, the 27th verse. And God created man. Right, man. So God created man in his own image after his own likeness and created him, 
male and female created he them. So now it's two men that one was made and the other was created. And the made man was over top of the created man, meaning the made man will rule the created man for six days. It may represent now, now, six thousand years. Bester, all right, that's enough. Malbester, you know, you can you can read all this in you want to. Arnold Murray does a good job, just as good a job as you do. Uh, look, you know, it's a created create, creating, man creating your doctrine. Man. Creating your doctrine about this created and made stuff. Well, doctrine, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth. That is Genesis 1 1. That means he, made, he created everything, all the ingredients, if you will, that he would need to, to then make everything that he was going to make. So when he made man and created man, he simply took the things that he had already made and created them into man. Now, you know, you can you can uh, uh, try to get your little uh, pet doctrines out of the Bible if you want to. It's just not going to hold up. It's just not going to hold up. And we're trying to discuss how we can bring people together by realizing that God never intended for us to be looking at the outward appearance of man and rather look on the inside of man. And you want to come up and say, well, it makes sense to look on the outside of man. No, I'm saying it doesn't. God is a spirit. John 4, 24. And I'm not going to let individuals try to convince me or convince everybody else that it makes sense for races to draw lines and be different from everybody else when God says, you know what, you ought to look at each other as children of God made in the image of God, children in the sense of he, he made them, and not make all these differences, have all these divisions. Now, you know, the nation of Islam might teach that, which Malvester is no longer with, I understand. But my point is, friends, we're trying to give you the whole counsel of God that will actually bring unity and bring people together, not divide them. And that's what we're striving for. Okay, thanks for your call, Malvester. You on the air? Yes, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I, I like the show. I appreciate the show and everything. I, uh, we all here for a reason. You know, we was all created for a reason. And it don't matter if you're black, you white, you Chinese, or whatever color you is. You know, everybody should, you know, you right, look past color, you know, and try to live together. And I think society out here in a, in a, in a scourge way then got better with races, mixed races, then been mixed together as far as being friends and doing things together like that, you know. And you and you do have, like, somebody like Mel Vester calling in, you know, being argumentative about things instead of quoting what the word, what the Bible said. You know, you can't change the Bible. Can't no man change the Bible. No matter what you, no matter what the term you turn out, you want to come over with. If all people just look past what they, how they live and just try to live for God because we was all put here for a reason. It don't even matter. And that, and that, and God, God, we're all here really to seek God's will and to serve him. Could we say? But that's what we're here for. That's right. That's you right. can't change that. That's right. We was created for a reason. No matter we black, we white, we Chinese, Puerto Rican, or whatever. We was here, we was put here for a reason. Okay. And God put us on this earth for a reason. Okay. And, and you know, and, and to me, I think I think things will change in this world because God wanted to see how people can live and adjust to certain things. And you can't, people go back in the past where I was raised by my grandfather or my grandmother. We believe so, 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 no, 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 no. But it don't matter. We was all put here for a reason. That's the whole issue. You can't argue about that. Right. You can't argue what God created and what he done and what he done and what he said was going to be done and what we'll be doing. We can't argue that. Can we just can we just put a Bible verse to what you're saying? Yes, sir. Look at this right here. Let us hear the whole, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is yes, the sir. whole duty of man. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter. Hey, it doesn't matter the race. That's the whole duty of man. That's right. You can't change that's that. That's right. That's right. You, you can't change that. So when people go and want to try to change the word, you ain't gonna be changing yourself. You condemning yourself to go to hell. You know. So when people call in, I, I think you're doing a good job. You know. I, I think you're doing what the Bible says, and you, and you follow, and you follow what God says to. You know. And I wouldn't people when people call in like that, like Mel Velsky and other people call in and want to be argumentative. Once I showed them the verse and what the Bible said, I would hang up on them. I wouldn't even argue and be argumentative with it. <laughs> well, sometimes it's good. I know the Bible says, answer not a fool to his folly, lest you become like him. But it also says, answer a fool to his folly, so that he you know, won't be wise in his own conceits. Yeah. So sometimes it's good yeah. just to let the community see you know, just how foolish some of this stuff is. 
Yeah, but once but once you give somebody something, you know, it's like what God give us. God, we he, he bless us with food, he bless us with water, and once he gives you something, and then if you give somebody because cause the word is just like food, you know, it, it's a it, it's a food to our, to our body, you know, and that's what we have to live off for. That's what we supposed to live by. And once you give it to them, and then they still want to be all, oh, you can't change that word right there. Right. So God says, I mean, far as don't be argumentative argumentative about 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 this word. Don't argue about this word because he know I know what's right there. You know what's right there. So when somebody else try to change it, hey, I won't even argue with them. I just I just get disconnect them on the other hand. <laughs> no, well, for real. I, no, I, because I, because I think that it, it don't. I'm not saying it make you look bad. I think that you, you you're doing what what you're supposed to do, and like I said, and there should be more people out there like you. But just sit on TV, just you know, because other people want to call in and get their opinion and, and and tell them how good a job you're doing and stuff like that. And, and wasting your time on somebody like that, I wouldn't even waste my time. Well, I appreciate I appreciate you watching. Uh, if thank you, you if you if you uh, uh, have you been out to the tent, sir? Did you go out to the tent? No, sir. Tent meeting? Well, I wish you had them. Uh, um, I uh, watched some of it on TV. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Thanks for your call. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Well, so, you know, this is what we're trying to do. I appreciate the caller, you know, realizing, you know, the folly of individuals, you know, trying to just really uh, incite division when, when the Bible says we're trying to bring unity, and that's what we're all about. So, uh, you know, this is what we're trying to do. Now, friends, and, and, and like I said last night, this is what we're trying to do, help the community see that the, really the only thing that can break down the barriers of racism is the Word of God. And when someone comes in and says, well, you know, it makes sense that, that, that all the races should be uh, separate, otherwise you won't, be, you won't be pure. You know what? If I'm concerned about the spiritual man and not the physical man, why would I, why would I worry about that? You know, why, why, would, I, why would, would I be concerned? If I'm really, really concerned about the spiritual man, it's the fleshly, carnal man who's concerned about keeping, you know, keeping a race pure, you know. And you heard Mouse Fester say, "Well, you don't, you mess with our, with our women, you know, like, like it's something that, uh, that I did." Friends, come on, we're trying to get past that. We, we're trying to move past that. Quit looking behind. Let's look, let's look ahead. Now, last, uh, last time I played. Uh, uh, something uh, for you that I wanted to comment from, and maybe maybe we'll get it tonight. But this was something that took place over at Bible Way Cathedral, and it was the instance where uh, a man was speaking to Johnny Robertson, and the comment that he made, we we played that, and I was really wanting to get a comment from someone from Bible Way about what, what exactly they thought about this. Was this was this a good statement or not? Exactly who you are. Are you asking who I am? Are you upset about something? No, no. Okay. I just saw you stooping are you, around. Uh, are you an authority here? Yeah, no, I'm authority not. here. No, you're not. I'm a, this my church. I go to it. Your here? Yeah, no, I'm no, authority you're here. No, you're not. I'm a, this my church. Uh, are you an authority here? Yeah, no, I'm no, authority you're here. No, you're not. Oh, okay. I just saw you stooping are you, around. Uh, are you an authority here? Yeah, no, I'm authority not. here. No, you're not. I'm a, this is my church. I go to it. This is your church? Your hey, man. You see, I'm working, man. Yeah. Go and do what but I'm you saying, it really shouldn't have been anything to you if you're not yeah, actually... But, you, but as long as I'm working out here, I got it right there. No, you, you don't. No, you don't. Man, go ahead, man. Oh, you white people suck down oh. here. Oh, good. You said it. White people suck down oh, here. Oh, good. You white people suck, Daddy. You white people suck, Daddy. Now, my comment was I wanted to see if we could get a comment from someone from Bible Way about whether that was uh, maybe an acceptable way to talk to uh, individuals or not. And uh, I don't know what we had a gentleman call in the other night. We weren't sure if we got if that was uh, from Bible Way or not, but we're going to see if we can get somebody tonight. You're on the air. Hey. Hey. I was. I've been watching it, and uh, it just seemed like he's so in hostile, the way he was talking to Johnny. You know, it, it, maybe they, some people think, you know, you're, you're, you're talking to, trying to explain the right way. 
you know, like you're going to take people from their church away because you're explaining it. That's what they're scared about and upset about. I, I, I've been watching it for, for a little while, you know, and that's what I could see. So you're saying that the people are afraid that people are going to leave the, the yeah. churches of men and go to the, to the truth. Right. You know, okay. they, they, you know, that's why they're getting so hostile. You know what? You know what, sir? We're on, we're on the same wavelength right here. That's exactly where I'm going with this. I believe the exact same thing. I believe that's exactly what they're afraid of. They're, they're afraid that they're going to lose a position that they have because the truth is going to cause individuals to migrate away from error and migrate to the truth. Let's just go ahead and put a Bible verse to it. How about that? In John okay. chapter 11, verse 48. John chapter 11, 48. This is what the Jews said about Jesus, the religious leaders. If we let him, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. If everybody starts following him, we won't really have an, a, 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 a reason to exist. We won't have a reason to function. So right. that's why we're afraid. And I think you're exactly right. They, they right. feared Jesus. They hated Jesus. They were envious, envious of him. And I think you're exactly right. It's just like the other one, too, when you, you put on the... Uh that other uh, pastor on uh, Danville, mm -hmm. he started yelling at Johnny. Right. And tell him, get out of here and everything else. <clears throat> What's he so uh, upset about? That doesn't make sense. And the, these other, you know, you're trying just to, to explain to them, and they're getting really hostile. Right. That's what it is. That's right. I think you're, I think you're exactly right. They're, That's they're what it is. They're afraid of losing their place. Exactly. And so the way they do that is they, they have to engender some kind of or stir up some kind of hostility toward us and make us, and make us appear to be the bad guy right. so that no one else will come to you know I mean, if you tell someone, you know, if you tell someone that the dog will bite, the dog will bite, the dog will bite, you won't go near the dog. But in reality, the dog may just be a friendly, you know, friendly little pet. That's right. But if I if I convince people enough to stay away, then uh, you know then they won't come near. And so I think you're right. They're they're afraid that individuals are going to migrate away from the error they're teaching and go toward the truth. That's right. All right. All right. Thanks for your call. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> now I believe that this is actually a a very good point that the gentleman making. You know something that. Uh, uh, people are failing to realize. Now, the reason why I wanted to comment is because of this. Bible Way, the founder of Bible Way, Smallwood E. Williams, was a civil rights activist. And as we pointed out last night, I think, you know, when I think of civil rights activist, I didn't know the man, but I would assume that he was looking for equality, trying to get rid of racism, trying to get rid of the animosity that was directed toward the black community. Well, wouldn't it then make sense that the same kind of person would not want to stir up animosity toward those of other colors, since we're talking about colors tonight, I guess. You know, wouldn't it make sense? So I'd like to know what, what, would, uh, what does the, uh, the Bible Way Cathedral uh, have to say about this? Is this something that they're going to condone, or is it something maybe they were going to speak out against? The gentleman said he was an authority. He was a member there. So are the churches of men, like Bible Way, are they going to be concerned about causing division? Or are they going to try to bring peace and harmony to the community? Are they concerned about this problem as much as the Church of Christ are? See, we're trying to, we're trying to see what, is, uh, you know, what their response is going to be. We would like to hear from someone from the Bible Way Cathedral. like to hear from them. Now, here's, here's another example. The gentleman called in and said, uh, uh, you know, I think they're afraid. Listen to what Mr. J.C. Richardson says. Now, I know you know J.C. Richardson. He's been on with Johnny Robertson, broke his word, said they were going to have a debate, give equal time, and then he, he didn't keep his word, didn't, didn't uh, uh, allow discussion, simply uh, took all the time, and here he is making threats, said that he would take care of things in Martinsville and let his friend take care of things in, in Danville. So 
We know there's some sort of uh, uh, cooperation going on trying to undermine the work of the Lord's church here. But listen to what Mr. Richardson said about the church of Christ uh, a few years ago. Well, I think I don't have my... Let me have... Uh, let me get it right here. I can get it right here. Didn't have this plugged in. It's all right. A very interesting comment he made is uh, what I wanted to play for you. And let me just put it right here. Here we go. I think this should work. Now, let it go look for it. It is a predominantly white denomination that has blacks participating uh, as a part. Out of it. Same thing with the Presbyterian Church, the same thing with the Lutheran and the Episcopal Church, the same thing with the United Methodist Church, and from, from what I have been able to ascertain, that is also the case with the Church of Christ. I would be very surprised to find out that the Church of Christ has a, a predominantly black fellowship or leadership. Now, I'm, we're still doing research. Uh, 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 on the Church of Christ, and there are many of you who have questions about that simply because uh, of the programs that they have gotten on. I'll let you just one more time. It is a predominantly white denomination that has blacks participating uh, as a part of it. Same thing with the Presbyterian Church, the same thing with the Lutheran and the Episcopal Church, the same thing with the United Methodist Church, and uh, from, from what I have been able to ascertain, that is also the case with the Church of Christ. I would be very surprised to find out that the Church of Christ has a, a predominantly black fellowship or leadership. Now, I'm, we're still doing research uh, 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 on the Church of Christ, and there are many of you who have questions about that simply because uh, of the programs that they have gotten on. That All right, so this is the statement he makes, you know. Uh, he'd be surprised to find the Church of Christ if they have a predominantly black leadership or followership, whatever. Now, what difference does it make what race is predominant in a religion. Does that make it bad if it's predominantly one or the other? Because I dare say that the Mount Sinai Apostolic Church or the Apostolic Church in general is predominantly white. See, it, it means predominantly black. Now, does that mean something bad about that particular religion simply because there are more of one race than another race in, inside of it? You see, if we're really talking about truth, would we really focus upon how many of one race is in the particular uh, system of belief? Would we really think about that? Would we really worry about that? Or would we, or would we then turn around and say, you know what, let's be concerned about what is being taught here. So that, that's what we're dealing with. So, you know, I have, to, I have to be concerned about things like that. So what did he really mean? What did he really mean? Well, this is what I, I believe is the, is the problem. The, th the fact of the matter is, like the caller said earlier, now I'm having my, uh, he is, uh, he's, he's, he's got some fear here. He's got some fear here um, about what we are teaching as to drive him away. Is, is what we are teaching, you know, is, is he concerned about what we're teaching or is he more concerned about what we look like? Listen, friends, neighbors, when you visit the Church of Christ in your area, you're going to find you're going to find people from all the community, different communities in there. And so uh, we're, we're, you're going to find that our churches look like the communities around us. That's really what we're dealing with. So, uh, you know, don't be concerned really about what we look like. You ought to be concerned about what we teach. And I think that's a, I think that's a fair assessment. Individuals in the, in the community know that we're concerned about the Bible. We're not concerned about uh, what people look like. We have people from all walks of life, all social backgrounds, high socioeconomics and low socioeconomics. We have whites. We have blacks. You see, we're, we're diverse because we are looking for individuals who love the truth. Truth uh, uh, loves individuals for what's on the inside, for that good and honest heart, not because of what they look like on the outside. So my, my question is, 
is the, is the fear among the individuals in these churches of men, whether they, the churches be predominantly white or predominantly black or predominantly green with purple polka dots, is it because they fear that the people might leave if they hear the true, truth? You know, there's Jackie Poe up here in the, in the Mercy Crossing that says, that says to his congregation, as your pastor, I'm telling you, don't watch this program. Why? What do you have to fear about watching this program? You'll let them watch uh, uh, dirty shows on TV. You probably don't say anything about what they watch on TV, right? They probably go home and watch soap operas every night. They go home and watch all the, the, the naked people on TV. Do you tell them not to do that? Or are you only concerned about them watching the Bible program? See? You let, you'll, you, do you say anything about watching all the dancing and last season on TV? Or do you just talk about them watching the TV programs on Sunday nights? and Thursday nights, and Wednesday nights. Is that what you're talking about? See? I believe these pre preachers have a Jeroboam complex. I believe they have a Jeroboam complex. Let me show you. In 1 Kings chapter 12, is this, is this call uh, for me? All right. Let's just go ahead and take this. You on the air? Hi. Yes, sir. I was actually calling because I was actually listening all the previous calls and I mean the guy who actually came on I think his name was Mal Bester mm -hmm. I mean you know I actually think he's a very intelligent man and I think you guys should actually give him a chance to actually voice his opinion because well, I mean I feel as though he has a lot that he could actually tell you guys that could actually help do you know who Mal Bester is you said what I'm sorry I said do you know who Mal Bester is I've ran into him a couple of times yeah he's He's, he's been, from my understanding, he's no longer, he used to be associated with the Nation of Islam. He's not a representative for them anymore. So he's, he's, uh, uh, he, he's a Muslim. Uh, he doesn't believe the Bible. We've had, uh, Johnny Robertson has had debates with him that we'd be well, glad to I give you a copy of. Well, I've got to correct you on something. He is still with the Nation of Islam. He's very strong with the Nation of Islam. Okay. And I feel as though that the Muslims as well when as the Christians was, could actually get along if you guys were actually what you say that you're supposed to be. You, a true you know what, Christian is a true Muslim. Well, you know what, And a Christian is one who actually submits their will to do the will of, a, of God and the definition of a Muslim is one who submits and do the total will of you, Allah. But so you know therefore, the, but, but, you call but, him Jesus, but I'll call him Allah. But That's because we go at different names does Hello? not make us Hello? enemies. Hello, I love you if you treat Hello. me right, and you Hello. should love me if I treat you Hello. right. But I don't have love for Hello. anybody who treats Hello. anybody wrong. So therefore, if you are Hello. true Hello. believer in what you say don't that you are, you should be able to defend it to the full extent. So therefore, I will say this. Hello, take a breath. Take a breath. The God of Islam is not the God of the Bible. And the Quran is not from the God that gave us the Bible. Now, you can say we can get along peacefully. And as human beings, we prob probably can. But if a Muslim is going to follow the Quran as they should, then there will be no peace between Islam and Christianity. That's just the nature of Islam. Islam is not a peaceful religion. Not according to the Quran that I read. Now, you may, you know, you may not follow the Quran like other people don't follow the Bible. I mean, there's a lot of people that say, well, I believe the Bible, but they don't follow it. So I will concede that there may be a lot of people who say, well, you know what, I follow the, the Quran and I don't do it. But they don't do it. So, you know, I'll concede that. But the God of Islam is not the God of the Bible. And on that, we will never be in agreement and we can never serve uh, God together because we don't serve the same God. We just don't serve the same God. So, and as far as Malvester, listening to Malvester, Malvester had time on, with a debate with Johnny Robertson on Star News in Martinsville, which I'm assuming you're aware of. And at that time, the reason I said he wasn't with the Nation of Islam, because at that time, you know, he stated that he was not sanctioned by them. So. I may, I may, that may have changed since then. I may be going on some bad, some old information, but I'm going by what I, by what I knew at the time, and he wasn't then. So, you know, as far as that goes, you know, we're not going to get along simply because uh, Malvester may be smart, because certainly he, he's not, not in this regard. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, uh, you see how she was, you were trying to explain to her, and she just, 
she just has so much hostile, and they just don't want to listen. Now, you're trying to explain what the Bible says, and they don't want to listen. They get upset because they've been taught one way. Right. And that's what they're getting upset about. Now, they're, they, they, they want to learn, but they just don't want to listen. They're just hard-headed. <clears throat> well, you know, and, and I think that's part of that is truth. You know, the truth has an effect on people. The truth can either harden your heart or it can soften your heart. It's just like the sun and clay. Exactly. You know, the same sun that melts the, that melts the ice also right. hardens the clay into brick. So uh, it depends on how you look at it. The Bible says, you know, that your conscience can be seared with a hot iron. And so that's really the, you know, what we're dealing with. All right. I, I, I appreciate your call. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You on the air? Hello. Hello, you on the air? Yes, sir. I, I'm so pr uh, surprised. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, um, this Malvern gentleman. Malvester. Uh, he is. Um, I've I've never heard anybody like him before. He is so off in scripture. He, 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 it's, it's as though he doesn't read any Bible. T turn your TV down. You're listening to the TV and you're I'm hearing the delay. Turn my TV down. Yeah, turn your TV down. Well, he doesn't really believe the Bible. That, that's the thing. He doesn't really, he, I mean, he, he, you know, it's kind of that double speak. Well, I believe the truth of the Bible. Well, you know, that's a very ambiguous term. You know, but what he really means is he only believes the Bible when it suits his cause. Exactly. <laughs> so, but go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, and I'm surprised that the woman that called on after him had to be a Muslim to talk the way she was doing to defending him. Well, I think she was. She said she, she, I think she said there at one point she was a Muslim or she believed in Islam. God of the Allah, Allah the God of Islam or something to that effect. No Christian woman would call in and defend something like that. It would be good if he opened up his Bible and read it. It doesn't talk anything about five atoms. It doesn't talk anything about black and white. It talks about an Ethiopian, but the Ethiopian, uh, God only talked about nations. He never talked about color. And you're exactly right. You did a great job in answering him. And uh, this is a good program to, for people to call in and learn what the, the, what the Bible actually says. And uh, the Word of God is true. And I um, just want to applaud you on how you handled it. And uh, you did well. Thank well, you, I appreciate sir. that. Let me, I'm, I'm gonna, I showed this last night. And I'd like to just get your brief comment on it if you're still on the line. Okay. Um, you know, you talked about the Bible talks about, what did you say? The Bible talks about uh, nations and not about color. Right. Uh, and I, I think it's a good point. Look, here's, here's, the, here's the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Mm -hmm. And you see the word right here, nations? Yes. Ethnos. That's where we get, we get ethnic, ethnicity. Now, you can be of an ethnicity <coughs> and be a different color. Right. See? I mean, I know of individuals who've lived in... Uh, foreign countries and they you know they they start manifesting the ethnic culture yes but 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 they're not from that culture <laughs> exactly see and so i mean uh, uh when i went when i've been overseas to the the marshall islands i mean those are polynesian people mm -hmm. they're they're dark skinned you know but but they're you know they they have uh they're they're not dark skinned like like uh, someone from Africa, they're you know they're what's it? They're Polynesian. I just can't scri uh, describe it. But but they have cultures, you know. You yes, know, exactly. The guys in the men in Fiji wear 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 skirts, and these are big guys, you know. Right. And and so that's 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 the eth ethnic culture, and that's what the Bible says: go into all of these ethnic groups, these tribes. Exactly. It's not talking about color; it's talking about just people wherever you find them. Yeah. In these different cultures, so. Uh, but I appreciate the comment about, yeah, it's not, you know, it says nations. It doesn't talk about go to colors. That's right. One, one, last, one last thing. He talked about uh, whites uh, slaving um, uh, Africans and killing Africans, uh, African-Americans. I am an African-American, but if he wants to talk <laughs> about uh, uh, blacks being killed, Malvern needs to talk about black-on-black -black crime because there are more blacks probably killed by, by our own people than whites. So... He needs to defend black-on-black -black crime. I'm going to go and let others call in, but uh, I thank you for 
are defending um, the truth of I, the gospel. I, I appreciate I appreciate it, and I you know c- come and visit our assembly sometime. Let yes, sir. Sure do. Let us meet you. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. You on the air? Uh, I'd like to order twelve domino pizza, please. Hello. You on the air? Yep. You're on the air. Okay. You need to turn your t- people. You need to turn your TV down, please, uh, before you call in. Now, here's what we're talking about. People have these Jeroboam complex. They're afraid that people will leave if they do what God says. Now, look, Jeroboam was told. Whoops, sorry about that. Jeroboam was told that he would be given ten tribes of the divided kingdom. Now, watch this. Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and and went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. Then shall all the heart of the people turn again to their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Now, God told him he would establish his kingdom just like he had the kingdom of David. But Jeroboam says, well, if they do what God says, they're going to leave me. You know what, friends, neighbors? There's an individual here in Reedsville that actually said that very thing when it came to things like tithing. They, he actually said, well, I would teach tithing if I taught the truth. Excuse me, if I taught the truth on giving, I'm afraid that the work wouldn't be supported or that he wouldn't be supported. See, I'm afraid if I do it God's way, I won't make it. If I tell them the truth on the matter, I won't make it. That's not putting faith in God. That's fearing. That's putting fear. And these, these preachers around here in these church of men, they know when you listen to the truth and you hear the truth, if you came out to the tent, if you listen to these TV programs that we're presenting to you from the Church of Christ, they know that you are likely to start moving away from where they are. But friends, what we're saying is, we're saying what you need to do is try to change where you are. You need to try to change where you are from within, get the church you're in, start teaching the truth, become a New Testament church, and, and, and worship God the right way where you are. But if you can't, that's when you can come and assemble with the Church of Christ. See, we're not trying to, to get great numbers. We're trying to get people to get back to the Bible. You're on the air. Yes, um... Uh, I was calling because I was uh, listening, and it was talking about um, the black and white. And I know in the book of Job, it's talking about, um, look upon me, I'm black. He was talking about his skin. My my skin is black upon me, and my bones are burnt with heat. So, and then, in Solomon, it's talking about, I am black and beautiful. Okay. I am black. And uh, so, what, what, uh, okay, the chapter of that one is the, of Solomon, is the first chapter in the fifth verse. All right. And it we, says, I am black and beautiful. Right. All right. So, what, so. In a Job, in Job, it's the 30th chapter and the 30th verse. All right. So, what's your point? And, and then in Jeremiah, it's the 8th chapter and the 24th verse. Because I was listening at um, Sam Vesta, and uh, Matt Vesta is talking some real intelligent things. Ma'am. And Ma'am. Uh, You're quoting the Bible and defending Mal Vesta, who doesn't believe the Bible? Huh? You're quoting the Bible and defending Mal Vesta, who doesn't believe the Bible. Well, I don't feel like that he don't believe the Bible. Well, it, because it's not a matter of what you feel. It's a matter of fact. No, he just said he believes the truth of the Bible, which uh, really I means he, to him ma'am, and Johnny on which the really means he picks and chooses what he wants to believe. He believes the Bible, ma'am. And then Jeremiah, ma'am, it's, ma'am, you know what, Jeremiah, ma'am, that. So I ask you, what your point is? What are you trying to prove by saying all these verses where individuals say that I'm black? What, what is what is that proving? What what I'm gonna give you one chance. What does that prove? What, what, what does that prove when these people say that I'm black? What what's, what's point are you trying to make? Uh, well, I'm I'm trying to make the same point that that person said before that said that it, it wasn't about no black and white, and he didn't know about nobody black in the Bible. The Bible speaks of black all the way through, and 
when I heard... Uh, but wh but what, what is the point you're making then? Well, I'm making the point is that Mazasa is not stupid. He can help you if you let him because he sure has taught me some stuff since the time that I've been listening to him. Well, Malvester uh, Mal can't help me with the Bible, ma'am, when he doesn't believe the Bible. That's that's what I'm trying to get to. He don't say. believe the Bible, ma'am. I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you what. I'm I'm, run, I'm running out of time, and I want to get some more calls. But now here's what I'm going to do. I think that he believes the Bible, Bible and uh, he believes the truth of the Bible is what he says. And what I'm going to say to you, ma'am, if you want to know more information about what Malvester believes and what he said about the Bible. I will, I will gladly get you a copy of the debate that he had with Johnny Robertson back in whenever it was, about a year or so ago, and let you listen for yourself. Would you like that? If so, if so, I'll tell the, call, the, the uh, man back here who is, um, uh, can take your phone number, take your information, and we'll get you a copy of that. But Mount Vester does not believe the Bible like you may think he does. You're on the air. Hey James, um, I just had a comment. Okay. Was uh, I had a doctor tell me one time that uh, if you were having surgery and uh, if you were white and had black blood transfusion, white people die from that. That's a lie. Well, that that was just a comment, Doc. Yeah. Well, that's a lie. Here, here, here's what the Bible says about it. If you would like to hear it. Um. God hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. Well, I, I, I mean, now you may like die if you get the wrong blood type. If you're if you're if you're an A positive or AB whatever, and, and you get the wrong blood type, you'll die. But you may die. But I'm saying you're not going to die simply because the blood came from a black person or a brown person or whatever. I mean, how do they know? He just made the comment like if they had like different things in their blood than we had and our, if our system wasn't adjusted to it that we could right die here. and here, uh, here's the Bible. people had passed. Yeah, well, here's the Bible right here. Oh, they I understand. I, I was just yeah. making that comment. Yeah, I, well, yeah, that's... I, yeah. I'm not racist. He needs, he needs to go back to medical school is what I'd say. All right. I, like they had sickle cell and things like that. Well, they, I mean, look, they screen they screen blood, blood they, our, they screen blood transfusions for... You know, for all these different diseases or whatever. I mean, they may ask you if you've taken aspirin in the past, whatever. So, uh, yeah, he's misinformed. Okay. All right, thanks for your call. All right, now, now, friends, this is what I want you to realize. When these individuals don't tell you the truth or try to prevent you from hearing the truth, and I've only got a few minutes left, but this is what I want you to consider. They're actually bringing upon you a new kind of slavery. Now, I'm not talking about just the black community or the white community or brown, yellow, red, whatever. They are bringing upon you a new kind of slavery that will not set you free because Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, John 8, 32. And when anybody, when any man prevents you from hearing the truth or deters you from looking into God's word to find the truth, he's going to put you into bondage. Now, friends, that's what we've been saying to you all along. When these individuals go back to the Old Testament, Paul said in Galatians chapter 5 that you're going back into bondage if you, if you go back to the Old Testament. Notice this, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He's talking about going back to the Old Testament. But when an individual goes back to the Old Testament and tells you you must tithe, right, then he's putting you back in bondage. He's putting you in slavery. It's a whole different kind of slavery. And see, I know they're not telling you the truth. I know these preachers aren't telling you the truth because they want you enslaved. They want you bound to what they teach. They want you dependent upon them and they convince you that they're telling you the truth and they give you just a little sample that says, oh, my preacher preaches the Bible. But in reality, friends, they're not giving you the truth because they know the truth will set you free from what they teach. And in Danville, the city of churches, people all over the city are enslaved because they have not been getting the truth that will set them free. And I want to give you, I want to give you an example. I want to take this call, uh, folks, but just, uh, please stay on the line, and I'll get to you. I want to make this point, though. 
Here is an example of how preachers have enslaved people. And again, I'm not talking about white, black, or whatever. I'm talking about people. They have been enslaved by not hearing the truth. Look at this. <clears throat> this was reported in the Danville Register and Bee on Monday. And the 2007 statistics say this. 40% of all U.S. births are born to individuals who are not married. They are born out of wedlock. That's in the United States. In Virginia, 36% of all births are born out of wedlock. In the city of Danville, now look at this. This is astounding, folks. Two-thirds of all Danville births, two-thirds of all of the children born in Danville are born out of wedlock. The city of churches has an illegitimacy rate of 66.8%. Now the statistics, and this is from the Virginia uh, uh, Health Department, says that 42.2% of those are white and 83.9% of those are black. Now look at this. Can you imagine this being in the city of churches? Who is not being told the truth? 44.7% of all births in Pennsylvania County are born out of wedlock? Look, somebody has not been telling the truth to people. Someone has not been really concerned about individuals hearing the truth. Otherwise, they would be teaching them things like self-control. Look, if you're not married, you can't do certain things if you're not married. Hebrews 13.4. The Bible says that marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. You see, in the city of churches, people are being put into bondage because they're not being given the truth that will set them free. When's the last time you heard the preacher preach on self-control? Now, you say, well, I, he, he was talking to those young people the other day and told them not to be going out here in the car, parking and petting in the car because they get them in trouble. Okay, self-control, but what about drinking and smoking? See, I know there's a lot of you Baptist folks out there that, that drink all the time, and y'all smoke, and you don't preach against it. See, what about some self-control? What about personal responsibility? In the city of churches, when you have an unwed birth rate or, or birth rate of individuals born out of wedlock, at that astounding rate, you mean to tell me that someone has been te teaching about personal responsibility? If you bring the child in the world, if you're big enough to make, to make a baby, you're big enough to, to care for it? See, the Bible says you reap what you sow. And the Bible says you bear your own burden. Galatians 6, 5 through 7. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, 8 that if a man provide not for his own, he's worse than an infidel. He's denied the faith and worse than an infidel. The Bible also says if you don't work, you don't eat. Now, in the city of churches, do you mean to tell me someone's been giving the truth to all these people? Now, all I'm trying to get you to see, neighbor, is if the truth, this is just one example, but it's obvious that no one, all these preachers, they're not concerned about your spiritual well-being. They're not giving you this information. They're not encouraging you to live soberly righteous and righteously in this present world. They're just concerned about you coming back. That's why they changed the rules. They said, well, you know what? So what, you had a kid out of wedlock. That's okay. It happens to everybody. You don't have to make any changes. Now, friends, let me tell you something. I'm not saying anything about people who've had children out of wedlock, but I'm saying that's not God's way. And you're going to have a hard road to hold. You're going to have a hard way to go if you do things differently than what God said. You bring a child into this world, you have responsibility to it. You have responsibility to it. You need to care for that child. And if a man is big enough to make a baby, you better believe he better get a job and start paying for that baby. See? But my point is, people are not hearing the truth, and that's what's getting them a slave. That's what's getting them a bondage. And it's obvious, it's apparent that these preachers don't want you hearing the truth because they'll know that you'll start making life-altering changes that will improve your life and help you serve God and not serve their pocketbook. The car that called in a little earlier ago, 
is exactly right. They're afraid. They're afraid of you. They're afraid of you hearing the truth and you won't come and line their pockets. You won't come and give them their tithes and their love offerings and they won't be able to drive around in the big Bentleys and they won't be able to elevate themselves up here to chief apostle of the world and they won't be able to elevate their, their wives up here to church mother and first lady of the, of the entire congregation in the, in the northern hemisphere or whatever titles they give. See, they're concerned about losing their place and that's why they keep you down by not giving you the engrafted word that can save your soul and set you free. But your friends in the church of Christ, we're concerned about that. We're concerned about breaking down all the things that keep people apart and can set them free by hearing the gospel, the pure gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Friends, I'm going to have to wrap up. I think I've got about 30 seconds. Am I about right? I've got about 30 seconds, so I'm going to wrap up. And I want to tell you, friends, your friends in the Church of Christ, your neighbors in the Church of Christ love you, they care about you, and they want to hear from you. If you're in Danville, 120 American Legion is where you can, it's where you can meet with the saints. 823 Starling Avenue if you're in Martinsville. And 250 the Boulevard is where you can meet with us in the evening. We want to hear from you. We want to see you. We want to meet you. Appreciate you watching. Hope that you are studying God's Word. We want you to know that this is the only thing that can bring us together and have unity that God desires between all races of men. And it's the Bible. That's why we encourage you. If you'll ask, what does the Bible say, you'll always get a word from the Lord. Till next time, have a good night. What if I say I won't give you the knuckle? A knuckle sandwich. Times are hard, and pastors are getting angry in Danville. Whether you believe the way I believe or not, I don't care. Videotape me. I run the devil out of our church, so get out. Don't come on this property again. Understand me. All right, well, as I All leave, right. as I leave, I hope you read 2 Timothy 2. I hope you read too, son. You worry about your own problems and get out of our business. There is no better business bureau in religion. The Church of Christ, then, is your best bet. We're at the tent, 7 p.m. each night, June 22nd through July the 3rd, across from the mall in Danville on Mount Cross, right next to... I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them. Some of y'all, get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please, don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance, and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 The Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily be some of the other news stories that are coming from around our Star News viewing area. First of all, we have...